morning. The the two umbrellas you see in the distance there, the red umbrella and the blue, that's the twins. <laughs> I guess they're not uh, they're not quite so uh, whatever twenty today. The red one went out first, and then the blue one followed uh, thirty seconds or so later. So. <laughs> It's a rainy day today. It's really nice. It's still hot and muggy. This is now rainy season weather. We have slipped back into the rainy season. The Meteorological Agency, well, Japanese people in general, really like to put a line on these things. Rainy season is over today. Tomorrow, summer starts. You know, change your closets, whatever. But in real life, of course, it's not like that. The things overlap. You know. Sometimes the weather, the season really does change just on one day and then it doesn't go back but uh, what's the tall tree-like structure next to the corner of the building not sure what you're talking about do you mean where the guy's walking right now that's a it's a telephone pole you know a power pole the tall tree-like structure next to the corner of the building Not sure what you mean, sir. Okay, we have work. Ton of, ton of, ton of work to do. There's a power pole. And there's wires going right across from it to the right. Right where the guy on his, I don't know, the entertainer man is. Right behind there, there's wires running back and forth. Yeah, you can't see the cables. It's gonna be a rainy, drizzly Monday. We're ready for this, it's fine. It's been baking. The last few days have just been baking. And the next few days now are going to be like this. They're going to be wet and drizzly. Yeah, it's peaceful, very, very nice. Back to the pool. I get the pool today, you know, I get, I get close about a half a block away. I get a bit closer, get a bit closer. And I can see there's a guy standing outside. Another foreigner actually who goes there, a guy standing outside, kind of a slumped mood. I can see the glass doors, and there's a, a thing inside the glass doors. There's a barrier, like a theater-type barrier, inside the glass doors that are going to open. And there's a sign. And I'm like, oh, come on, give me a break. I've waited four days. I don't need an unscheduled holiday. You know, Dave, cheer up, cheer up. It's okay. The guy's waiting there. So I get closer. <laughs> And it turns out, I shouldn't tell this story, I'm sorry. It turns out the sign says, in order to keep the air conditioning in the building at a reasonable level, please don't use these doors. Use the manual door to the right. So I get close enough to read this, and I, I realize what's happened. He's perhaps quite a bit newer than me here in Japan and hasn't quite got his reading skills yet. <laughs> I'm not one to talk. So I go and I point out what it is, and I open the door, and we can go in. But I thought it was an unscheduled holiday, so... And it reminded me, you know, back to those days when Dave himself, you know, couldn't read anything, just walking around in a daze. And I'm sure lots of times I would have, you know, made the same mistake, whatever. We're all waiting for a stream starting with you saying, we have no work to do today. You have got to be kidding. But you mean work on the, on the desk. I've got my own, in fact, it's funny you mention that because I've got my, my job list here this morning. And it's another, it's going to be, triage day. As soon as the stream's over, they're going to, they're called, they've already called a meeting. Ayama-san, Watanabe-san, Aoyama-san. They think it's a crisis again because there's so much, there's people waiting for me now. Kawasaki-san is waiting for color blocks. Somebody's waiting for this. Kawai-san. The sheer suit just, it's become another crisis. So whatever. <laughs> is the writing in Punic script? It might as well be. You tell me. I can bloody well read it. Oh, no, it's okay. Some of this is NDA, covered by NDA. Nothing, no, even if you could read that, it would be okay. There's nothing there that gives away any secrets. It's NDA season again here. Two of them. Okay, okay, okay. Well, the sign thing, you know, these days, of course, you just hold up your phone to the sign and it translates, right? Isn't that how it works these days? Oh, here we go. This was on my desk this morning. Actually, yesterday, she got some brought it up yesterday. Foggy went to This is not a new print, of course. This has been around for a long, long, long time. 
This is from one of our portraits series, and beautifully, beautifully rendered again. It says, Hori Kawasaki Suri Ishikawa Yoko. This is Ishikawa-san again. And she is getting good at this. The same color, the same color, the same color all the way through. Takes her time. She's, quote, slow, unquote. Nobody cares. Beautifully done. I checked these today looking for Chidi. This particular batch of paper doesn't seem to be all that bad with Chidi. Or it could be that she's a carefully selected. I don't know. Good wide background. No Chidi. The greens are great. Aren't they good fun, actually? Actually, I should be careful what I say here because we have changed this part way along. We published it once back in 2014 or something. I can't remember. And uh, I forget who it was. Somebody mentioned something about the greens. And we looked back at the original game and got, a, got Jed back in touch. So the first version of this we did years ago was different greens. But we've switched now to this dirtier, more uh, dirtier green. And it looks much nicer. This is the advantage when you're not doing limited editions. You're totally free to do whatever you want. And I'll, when it gets to show and tell time today, we have a new show and tell. But also, I want to mention one or two things about the book we looked at the other day. Uh, I, I made a couple of mistakes when I was explaining it to you. I said it was a limited edition of 250 or something. That's not true. The number, as I had the page open telling me how many numbers it was, I told you the wrong story. So let's touch up a couple of things on that at the end before we say our, see our new show and tell today. And a book package arrived over the weekend. A big, heavy book, heavier and bigger than the last package. And the language That is in Spanish. Doesn't say where it's from. Or does say it's Fabiola. It's Fabiola's book. No mistake, it's Fabiola's book. <laughs> Please remind me later on. So we have way too much stuff. There's also, my God, we're not going to get through it all. Remember the prints I showed you the other day, the set of Hiroshige prints, the ones that were, you know, made in 1908 or whatever. And I blabbed and blabbed and blabbed about them. And I talked about the fact that they were made with opaque prints, which was not so common back in the Edo time. I got emails, one, one very careful long, a couple of emails, but one careful long email talking about different kinds of prints that were published back then that had opaque prints. And the, the writer, the, the, the correspondent, said, Dave, you shouldn't have, you know, whatever. There were lots of opaque prints made back in the Edo time. So I went to my shelf here and pulled out a bunch, and whatever, there's something else to talk about about this. Another one, oh my god, what are we going to do? Let's just get some work done. We have too much. We have too much. Too much to talk about. OK, we're, we're leaving off. When I left you, when was it? Thursday, no, Saturday morning. I had just finished cutting these hairs, the brown hair, the brown hair. And I said I was about to tackle the crowd. Well, the crowd is done. I did it the rest of that day. I spent the rest of Saturday on the crowd doing that. Sunday, I didn't do this work. I've got to do one more brown thing today, and then it's going to be persuading. So I'm going to need a couple of minutes scope work here, and then we switch to persuading. So I'll give you two or three or four minutes, five minutes of quiet work, and then we're going to make some noise. Let me find the spot here. Yesterday was a fun day. I had such, such fun yesterday. Paying debt. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. The lady here who is obviously printing something. So we're going to have, there's going to be different colors involved here. The, the thing she's rubbing her tool on is going to be a white sheet of paper. It will be a baron here from a different block. And then around the paper will be the wood board, her bench. But this piece of paper will be white. And Jed, Jed is calling for a highlight color around the edge of this paper. And that's going to be in brown. It's going to match her hair. There will be a brown highlight edge around this. I'm not convinced that's going to work. 
but I'm going to carve it now first and we'll give it a test print and see how it goes. So we're just going to carve this little couple of lines here. Yesterday was debt day, paying down debt. We talked about this, uh, I think a few weeks ago we were talking about it. We're not talking about money here. I have no debts money-wise other than just normal. Uh, you know, it's payday uh, tomorrow, so that's a debt. I owe those people that money. But, but I mean, other debts I have none. But I spent the entire day happily, happily going through my list of accumulating technical debt and had great fun, great fun. It's the kind of feeling you get when, you know, there's been some housework or yard work and you've been putting it off and you haven't done it for a long time, long time, and finally you get a good clear day and you've got nothing else on your schedule. You drag out the tools, you get it done, and you, you get into your little zone and just keep going and keep going. And there's no question of just, oh, I think I've had enough. You just keep going. And that's what happened to me yesterday. It really, really, really was a fun, pleasant day. I got so much done. Our bookkeeper, when he gets here uh, tomorrow, he's just not going to believe what he's going to see. I've made his work so much easier. There's a construction outside. You can see, and uh, those of you who've been watching the stream for, for a long time, for years, you'll know on that corner was a Tendon restaurant. I forget what it was called. Ten, ten Take? Yeah, Ten Take. Take Ten. No, Ten Take. It was a well known um, udon restaurant. It was actually a notori notorious, is that the right word? Infamous, maybe that's better. It had a, 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 some time of infamy, a little bit, un undeservedly so some years back, before we came to Osaka, maybe 10 years or so, there was an episode where uh, they had put a little poster on the wall and I was saying, our, our shop is very, very crowded. Please be careful when you're inside. Please no strollers. And he had said something like uh, foreigners. I don't know the wording because it was before my time here. He didn't say no foreigners, but he said something that made it sound like uh, foreigners were not really going to enjoy this because it was too small. He tried to sort of, <laughs> he didn't want them in there. It was such a small place, you know. And uh, that was a big, big mistake because some of the activists saw it, went to City Hall and went to the press and went to the Yomiri newspaper and whatever. And he ended up being on the news because of his anti-foreigner stance. And the guy was just sort of just struggling to try and keep his business together. It blew over after a while. The guy across the street had pretty much exactly the same sign on. I think he must have, he, he saw the way the wind was blowing and took it down. <laughs> Tentake. Yeah, you can probably Google it. The story's probably still there. You Google down all Tendon restaurant, or maybe it's Tempera restaurant if you're looking in English or something. Tempera restaurant, Asaksa, Tentake. No foreigners. This story is probably out there in the old newspapers or something. I don't know. He wasn't actually a friendly guy, you know. This had all blown over by the time I moved here. I went in and eat once, didn't think much of it. He closed a few years ago, retired. But it looks like something is now happening with the lot.
Oh, it's a rainy day, there's a little sunshine, but it's still going to be a stinker. You know, my shirt is already soaking. My, my back is wet. It's going to be a stinker today still. It's airless. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> English and dogs stay out. I don't know what it said. It wasn't all that bad, but whatever. Did Sugasan come in? Yeah, she's due today. Upstairs it's going to be Sugasan. She's doing great waves. And uh, Ishikawa san's already here. She came while I was just getting up. She came about six o'clock. She's doing uh, the seventh month print, the July print. <coughs> They're busy, busy, busy. Okay, as I said, enough of the quiet stuff. It's now time to make some noise. We have done all the delicate work we can do on this block. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see what's going on. The brown is cut for the hair, the brush stroke, the crowd at the front, the tools, the hair again. This is all cut. Flipping it over, this one's going to be a green sweatshirt. There's another little pattern that has to be cut into it. We'll do that later. Let's get persuading. For those of you who don't know what's going on, it's now time to use a larger tool. Bottom edge of crowd, it's cut. It's cut, it's cut, it's cut. It's going to come off with this tool. Maybe let's just put down the outside. Is there construction? I don't know what was happening over there. They got a truck. I guess they're just getting ready. There's going to be some digging today. They unloaded a digger. So I guess the first step is preparing for the foundations for whatever new building is going to go in there. It might get noisy out there. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Every time the wrong way. Okay, here we go. Stay zoomed out for a while so you can see what's going on. to do exactly like somebody says. Time to do exactly what we see on the woodblock. Hopefully not exactly like it. That dude is holding his chisel at an unbearable angle, but whatever. Then I got an email about this a while ago. This is, this is weeks, weeks, weeks ago, maybe months ago, talking about this clearing step. We talked about the three stages, one, two, three. Stage one was the knife doing all the cutting. The traditional carvers would do all of the cutting. They would never have done even this little bit of clearing I did here, only knife. Step two is the chisels chisels and gouges. So it's really knife to gouge and step three is chisel, clearing the outside. So it's three stages for three concepts and different tools, knives, gouges, chisels. But somebody asked, why do I always start the gouging cross grain? This is interesting. I don't really know, I have a specific answer. There's the wood. We do most of our cutting, of course, with the grain. You'll see me in a few minutes as I'm going. It'll go one way, it might be against the grain. We'll turn it and go with the grain to cut it out as smoothly as possible. But always, and this is just simply Dave's habit, for no other reason than its habit, is that we've got an area that has to be rounded out. So Dave has been starting with the cross grain section. Here's the area we're going to be leaving, so I'll cut cross, cut cross, cut sideways, and then clear out as far as we need to go. And is that the official method? Absolutely not. Is there an official method? I don't think so. But someone was asking, 
Can you please explain why it's necessary to do the cross grain first? And I don't think it is. But also, 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 somebody is probably reminding me here. Ah, this is our registration mark. Put this choco egg for somebody. Happy, happy, happy. You marked one. Oh, he did remind me. Okay, all right. It's okay. Chocolate egg's fine. I was on this, you know. I was on this myself, but uh, I got it. We don't want to talk about what happened the other day with this one. It happened off stream, actually. This one didn't make it. It came off and I glued it back in place. I'm not supposed to tell you what that was. We're also going to run into earthquake trouble here, so just a second. Somebody mentioned about the reverb sound in their room, you know. I don't know how much is natural and how much is the compressor we've got. It is a long room that's, that's plastered, so yes, there is, I think, an echo happening from down at the back. You're also perhaps picking up part of the sound from the outside microphone as well. Wrong direction. We've cleared away from around it. 
<coughs> and when I see pictures somewhere on the internet, people are doing you know woodblock printing by themselves over there. They will clear away like this, and then use really really small little brushes to paint on. We can't use little brushes. We want to use brushes as large as possible. Even to print this block, even the printer is going to use a brush something like this. Maybe not quite that big. Something about this big, because the more the larger the brush you've got, the more pigment you get in it. You dab pigment on, brush it, bang, print, print. You can brush it again, print, print, brush it again, print, print, dab on, brush and print. When you've got a big reservoir of pigment in your brush, the colors from the print to print to print are much more consistent. So, so long story short, the reason we want to use a larger brush, so if I did only carving here, that brush is going to bang here. So we have to now get the next chisel and come back. So even though it's a small, tiny area, I still need and the rule is yubi ni honka sambo, three fingers, so that the printer can come in with a brush and bang and bang and not worry about getting stains on the wood. So we're going to come back about three fingers. It wouldn't normally draw it, but here, just to show you what's going on, something like pencil, pencil, I don't have a pencil, yeah, I do have a pencil, so something like this. We're going to come back to somewhere around there that's got to come off. We're going to keep the registration mark here. Then when we do the same thing on the other side, this will also come off to three. So we will have, this is all going to go. That's going to stay. This is all going to go. That's got to stay. And the same thing will happen here. It'll be something like Yubi Sambo. So all this will, will come up. So you can see there's the example, sort of a finished one. The printer is going to use their brush for this. There's another thing too that's funny. Dave's the left-handed carver. He does this. So Dave looks at this, imagines how the brush is going to work. And he comes in here mentally. So he clears out enough here for a left-hander to do this. He doesn't cut here so much, actually. It's not my habit. But then it goes upstairs to a right-hand printer. They come in and do it, and they're always yelling at me, Dave, please cut more on this side. And it's because I'm a lefty, and I don't think about it and see it, because to me, I would never touch that zone. My left hand is going to come in, brush it, done. But a right-hand printer has the completely opposite angle. And I, I've been getting in trouble for that, and I should maybe cut that one a bit farther. Following the rules, poison of choice today is from the people who brought you Asahi beer. I guess that's a British company, doesn't it? Have they bought the British company or they bought the rights? A hundred years of history in this bottle of water. A hundred years of tradition and history in this water. Historical water.
wood grain is actually this way, but that's uphill, so we've got trouble here. Going this way <coughs> is against the grain, and it's going to dig in. But going this way is uphill. This way is easier now because the wood grain, as I said, it's moving to cut this way and this is downhill, so this is okay, smooth on the way. Much more to do persuading. We've got to go all around, all around, all around, all around. But to give this a break, just for a minute, just to switch to a different job, <clears throat> let me just clear this bit in the middle here. It's just too much persuading. It's no fun on the stream to sit here and bang too much. I can't see the chat. It's too noisy. So let me just switch out a little bit. Even though if Taransan is watching, he'll think, no, 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 no. Because you don't switch out. You do one job till it's finished. But let me just switch out just for a minute. to try and get more variety into the stream. Again, step one, step two, step three. You saw step one at the beginning. This was step two, the clearing. And step three is the flat chisels, the bullnose chisels, flattening the ocean bottoms and getting up against the lines.
talked about this many, many times, so uh, this is not just my quirk. Getting the wood here, not flat, but what you want to do is you want to get all the ridges and little scratchy bits taken away, because they collect pigment. A place like this, a place like this, it's no big deal. It's below the surface. It looks like it's not going to cause any trouble when you put pigment on here. You'll rub pigment, the paper will touch, the paper will never touch this little place down here. But what happens is, because it's rough, it gathers pigment. And then the pigment goes on top of pigment, on top of pigment. And what happens is a little, a little bit by bit, not a mountain, but a higher area starts to build up. And somewhere along the printing line, copy number 100, copy number 200, whatever, it blots. So our policy is, is clear. As much as possible, get rid of these roughnesses and it really, really works. You don't need to make it glass smooth. And if you're only making 10 copies, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. But if you're making a couple of hundred, it's a big, big, big deal. Lots of times I'm using this tool, it's not actually a traditional tool, but uh, it really, really is useful. Back in the Edo time, there wasn't any chisel of this type, the kind with this modern, modern handle and a flat wide. Back in the Edo time, there was what we called the ice key chisels. They were like this, in a, what was a more common type was uh, was like this, where it was a single piece of wood with a tool driven into it and it was cut back. And then this came along in the 20th century. These came along. And they were used in lots and lots and lots by the by Sosaku workers. Sosaku Mokohanga workers. So I'm using this one even though it's not technically a traditional tool. It works really, really, really well. Got a beautiful hollow ground on the back. I always remember the guy, the guy who gave it to me, Usui Kinzaburo-san. He's, uh, he's long, 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 long gone. He must have been 80 or something when he gave it to me, and that would have been back in the 1980s. So he's, he's long gone. There's a story about him in my newsletter. If you, if you Google on woodblock.com, if you Google it in there for uh, Usui Kinzaburo, you'll find a story about this guy, pictures, and talking about this knife. He was trying to corrupt me, you know. He knew I was trying to be a, a, a traditional carver, and I guess he had a bee in his bonnet. Those guys don't buy his tools, you know. I don't know. I don't know the full backstory, but uh, he was trying to corrupt me by saying, "Look, you know, the traditional carvers don't use these, but my God, they're so good. They're so useful. They work so well, you know." And because I was trying to be quote unquote traditional, I must have demurred. I don't remember because this is 40 odd years ago, but I must have said, I don't know, you know, I want to do the traditional way, you know, whatever. Anyway, he laid this one on me. He gave it to me. It originally used to say Usui. It had his name on it. It's long, long worn off now. He gave it to me and uh, yeah, it really, really, really does work.
really, really, really works well. Then the final stage, of course, is you get up in between. You know, I could have actually probably come closer with those chisels. I've left a little bit too much here. I, you have to be, you know, too close, and the potential for disaster is there. I don't want to try showing off, especially when you're talking and chatting. But yeah, I left a bit too much there. If Taran San was seeing this, or Asuka Sensei was seeing this, thinking, "Come on, Dave, you can do a bit better than that." Okay, it doesn't matter, we're fine. we're fine. A bit more insurance cut. <laughs> I'm off camera, am I? <laughs> Sorry. I, <don't laughs> I can't do both at the same time. And we need a cameraman and a sound man and uh, an executive producer. This program brought to you by. That's just funny this comes up just now. I was off camera, so I can't see the camera and see what I'm doing at the same time. Yesterday when I was doing all my uh, my technical debt paying, <laughs> I, I can't stop talking about that. Yesterday when I was doing all the, the desk work, you know, I was at the computer screen all day long. I, uh, I googled up some, I uh, went to YouTube and, and uh, put on some, some favorite music, you know. I've got my own music collection here, my own hard drive full of tons of stuff. But nowadays, I guess, of course, you know, anything that's ever, ever, ever been recorded is out there on YouTube. And for some reason, something came into my mind, I don't remember why, I remembered Oliver Gannon and Ed Bickert. These are guitar, uh, jazz guitarists in Vancouver. 
Ed Bickard's gone now for sure, all over again. I don't know. He's older than me, way older than me. So uh, he may be up and running still, or he may be gone. I don't know. And those those two guitarists, Ed Bickard from Toronto and Oliver Gannon from Vancouver. So I played a bunch of their stuff. I just found a YouTube, uh, you know, searched on YouTube for it. And, uh, so I very, very much enjoyed yesterday going through their stuff. And one of the albums, it was a duo album, it was Ed Bickert on guitar and Don Thompson on bass. And again, he's, I'm sorry, these, these are old guys from, this is from the 1960s, 70s, 80s, so these people are probably all gone. And Don Thompson was a bass player in Toronto at the time, uh, famous in Canada and Toronto, unknown by the rest of the world. If he'd been in New York, he would have been, you know, famous. And the album was recorded by Don Thompson, the bass player. And that's the reason. I mean, Dave is sitting here trying to do this cutting, and Dave is actually running the recording here at the same time. And I remember reading the liner notes for that thing that was there on, on the YouTube channel, you know. And that Don Thompson, the bass player, had got all the microphones and a recording machine and set up in the background, whatever, got it all started, hit the red button, whatever, come out on stage and, and do the gig, you know. I guess he did that. He had his own little record label, I think, or something. So it's the same thing, woodblock printmaker here, go off camera again. <laughs> the only way to get on there is just to zoom out. I can't do both. I can't zoom in close and stay on camera. <laughs> No, the rain is not helping. The rain is not cooling down. It did first in the early morning. There was a little bit of a coolness out there from the rain on the pavement. But now, no, that's gone. It is now. The, the thing has clamped down. The sun is up there just over this cloud bank. And it is now hot, sticky, and muggy. My shirt is soaking wet. It's the worst of the worst weather here in, in Tokyo. Well, I guess it could be worse, but whatever. Anyway, it's hot and muggy. How's our time? 8.47. We have so much stuff to do today. I don't know what to do here. Let's finish off this little batch and then start to hit some of the other things. We've got to do Fabio's book, and that may take an hour. I don't know. If it's all in Spanish, it might not help, but let's see. I also got a mail the other day. Somebody said, Dave, please don't forget the black book. And I think Vivid also had mentioned this a while back. Vivid out there is uh, eager to see more of the prints in the black book. And it's not that I've forgotten it at all. I'm sorry. It's on the shelf here right beside me right now. It's that we've had sort of such an embarrassment of other stuff to look at recently. So uh, it's sort of the backup when I don't have a new show and tell item that came in this week or something like that. I drag out the black book. but. Uh, there are people there who are really, really interested, and there's lots of good stuff coming up. We are not uh, through it by any means. There's lots of good stuff coming up.
Okay, I think we're there on this zone. No, one more thing to do. We've got to scratch a letter there. This is kind of an Easter egg. I don't know those of you who know what's going on here. The particular piece, this is going to be the green block, the block that prints the green color on this print, and it just has this one tiny little zone. You can see the guy's hair is falling in the way and this is one arm and a body and this is his green sweatshirt and the little tiny we're going to play the game here jed didn't put this into the image but it's here <laughs> do this off camera let's get this go that's the only way to get this thing pinned the only way to pin this is get the scope out Put it under the scope, get the camera. That's the only way to stop from going off camera. And I think in real life, this is Times New Roman or something, but get serious. I am not going to attempt that. We are just going to scratch in The girls are going to complain because this is going to be tamari yasui. This is going to fill with pigment really easily. It has a flat top, this M, right? I forget how Times Roman works. Okay, I need your help here. We have an M, and it's got two, you know, the parts that make up the middle part of the M. But on that font, one of them is thin and one of them is fat. Which is which? Which is which? If we were going to try and make this sort of look like the real thing, if I have a letter M in capital letters in, in Roman font, up, angle, angle down. Which of the angle is thin and which is thick? Give me a help here. Uh, my chat here isn't doing fonts. Give me a sec to jump out to somewhere where I can see a font. Start new mail, format rich text, type the big letter M, blow it up to 72 and select font, there it is right there, times. Okay, so in real life it's the right hand one is thin and the left hand one is fat. So here we're gonna reverse that. So the left hand one is thin and the right hand one is fat. So let's try this. If you're going to go for a joke, you might as well go for the joke. And actually, now that I think about it, the two verticals were supposed to be different as well. I didn't do that. Oh, well. Okay, we have an M and the beginning of a Y. That's enough. You were there at the creation. Comic Sans, yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's not the way it worked. Okay, it's 856. I really don't know. We got too much stuff to do here. 
The next real work for me here is banging, banging, banging. I don't think we need to do more banging. Let's look at Fabio Lausanne's book. We've done an hour of work here. Let's, don't forget the serifs, John. I should have known, actually, if, if I could have guessed who would say that, it had to be you. <laughs> to be you. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> chocolate eggs, chocolate eggs. Okay, this is definitely it. There's no mistake, absolutely no mistake. It's a, a package international economy. We know that. I can read Spanish. Look at me, I'm a genius. Okay, let's have a look. It is indeed from Fabiosa. That's her address, which we probably should not put on the internet. Doesn't matter. And if you're watching, I, you're probably not watching, you're busy making prints, but thank you, thank you, thank you for this. I had no idea it existed. Oh, we may have a bonus inside. We may have a bonus. Oh, it's, it's that time. What the nabi san? Ayano san, Ayano san, Ayano san. Okay, give me a break, give me a break. I haven't seen you for three or four days. <laughs> Then we love an update the coffee system. Now the coffee, one cup of coffee is not 100 yen anymore, 110. But they added three selections for this cup of coffee. You can choose regular coffee, yeah. light, light, or darker. Dark, I see. So you know what, there's a switch or something? Tell there's a, there, there are buttons. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I was half of this last. I chose the one in the middle, which was regular. Oh, so, 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 so. Sorry for interrupting. The stream is already there. angry at me because I called you Wadanabe san. Nanda. <laughs> Win some, lose some. This is Ayano san, of course. There's a back story. We've got the names, you know. I'm really having trouble. This is Ayano, her first name. What nabe san is Aya san. And we have Aoyama san. And my brain is not capable of handling all these. She's at the back there. We can take this off. Okay, we have here, she sent me a book, it seems, but also, might we have some bonus stuff inside? Let's have a look and see. Barcode for the blind. Look at the size of that barcode. My God, I could carve that. Anderson, <laughs> before you get settled, can I ask you for one favor? In the shop there, in the section of stuff from overseas printers, we've got some prints by Fabiola Gill. You've probably seen them. There's the lady walking right there, for example, and there's one big horizontal one, somebody swimming. It's in the guest section. And I, I can't show her. No, 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 no. Okay, I'll go get it myself. It's okay, doesn't matter. You kids don't know where anything is. And bonus prints. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Another beautiful book on making mokohanga. And a print. <laughs> it's in Spanish. <laughs> oh, translation. She must have gone to Google and translated it. <laughs> it's okay. I think I can understand. This lady is such a nice lady. And, you know, she likes me and likes the fact that we were willing to help her. She likes this too much. And it's like, please settle down, settle down. But this is an example. 
she would have felt that she is a really, really nice lady. She would have felt it impolite just to give me a printed out blah, blah. She has sat down, pen to paper, and written, you know, her, her, her letter thanking us for, for the help we did for her and stuff like this. It really, really, the, the age of, you know, I myself now, I'm going to send out sheer certificates this week, and I'm not going to do a handwritten letter to each one of those people. It's a printed thing, you know. I sign it, but this lady is showing me how it should be done, you know. Okay, there's nothing secret here, nothing at all. Let's show the, and we'll look at the book. Here's the, here's the letter from her. Nothing secret here at all. Tell you what, I'm going to go grab another print of hers. Let me leave this on screen for a moment. While I go and grab another print from over there that I want to show you. One second, I'll be back in a minute. There's nothing private there to show, it's just saying thank you. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. This is the print. This is hers. This is her, uh, to me, this is her most iconic. Look at this, made everything too small now. We have a few of her, her prints in our shop as, on, in the guest corner. And this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful classic design. Just love it, love it, love it. This is another one of hers. Simple, clean, beautifully made, nicely crafted. Just, I can't say enough good things about her stuff. Let's open the book, another one. Oh, we have silver. Ho, 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 ho. Look at the back side, look at this. nicely done. This lady is so competent at this. It's not just fun to see nice prints, interesting prints, well designed. She pushes my buttons in it. She's technically, she's another control freak, technically doing well. And the washi, it's washi, I don't know what it is. It's very, very thin. It looks like X percent pulp inside maybe. I don't know what it is. It's very, very thin. Look at the intensity. This is the back side. Polka dot boots. Is it a kind of awagami paper? I don't really know. I don't know. Maybe Fabiola san herself would, would uh, be able to tell us more about this. <laughs> she says, I send you my last woodblock print, Rain in the Saksa. I think she means my most recent woodblock print. This is this hand bound. What, 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 what? Look at this. Look at the binding. Okay, now we can't do this justice here. What we'll do, we'll just flip a few pages here right now just to get an idea what it's like. I will look through it carefully, of course. I will drink it all in and I'll report back later on what kind of stuff is here. I mean, maybe you've seen it online and you know more about it than I do already. Mokuhanga. So let's just. Oh, look at this. That's my desktop. Fabiola san. She stole my desktop wallpaper. It's not accordion bound. I don't know what it is. Let's just crack open halfway here for a minute. It opens straight to the inside. Look at this. This is random. Look at this. It opens right to the inside every single page. What a cool way to do things. Look at this. 
So it's sort of regular binding, but without that thing at the back that holds it all tight together. I like this. So it wouldn't be working in a library. You don't know what's on the shelf, but who cares? Anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, random flipping. History, ukiyo-e, Japanese. Lots. I wonder where she got the rights to show all these. Or maybe she's got a print collection. Maybe she has a collection. I don't know. Or she went to different museums to get rights. I don't have any idea. I would have been happy to supply images as well. Look at this. This looks just gloriously, gloriously informative. Oh my God, look at this. Pictures, drawings, layouts. It's Spanish, of course, but... Sharpening. My God, look at this. It just goes on and on and on. Oh, Goto-san, the baron maker. Look at this, first finger up, he's got this. <laughs> Where's the paper here? This is Awagami, Soka, these are pictures from Awagami. Sizing, paste, printing process, how to moisten the paper. Oh my God, this is the book for the centuries. Oh yeah, the famous picture from Unsodo. This is Unsodo in, in Kyoto. This is very, very famous place, very famous warehouse. Whatever, 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 grab the book. The only thing is, what, I mean, like maybe it's already happened, an English translation online or, you know, uh, I see QR codes, what are they here? Instagram QR codes. Yeah, supplementary material. Yeah, there are QR codes all over the place, all over the place. Ah, I see video. She's got video content as well. Wonderful, wonderful. This is the book I never did. I did the first beginner book, you know, your first print, a little trivial little beginner book. I did the first print, and then she's done the book that we all need. Wow, wow. The only request is, of course, someone like me would, would really like to have the content in English. I wouldn't mind having the book in Spanish and just give me a link to an online translation or something. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I don't know any what price, nor is there a number. Can I give you a... a, a There's nothing to look to, I'm sorry. Is that it? That links to her website. I don't see an ISBN anywhere. So it's just, I guess it's privately published. Why didn't she buy an ISBN? It's cheap enough these days. No, there's nothing. There's not even a copyright page. I guess that's what this is. Here we go. Oh, I see. Financed, or at least in part, financed by the uh, Society, the Zaragoza Cultural SAU Society for this book. Okay, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Okay, I don't know where you could get it. Uh, somebody has maybe, you've got her a link to her Shopify. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whatever, I, I, as you know, I haven't read it yet, but it just looks like an, an unbelievable resource. An absolutely unbelievable resource. Incredible.
Okay, whatever, whatever. I'll just sit and read it later. I can't sit here. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'm going to drink this in. I'm going to look through it page by page by page. Absolutely fabulous job. Congratulations. A, a stunning, stunning achievement. Thank you very much, Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you. Okay, what's our time? 9.11. We have about 20 minutes left. Okay, we can pick up then on a couple of those things. Let's do this. We have sort of a bit of time here. We have a show and tell, but let's do this. Let's pick up then on a couple of those things that I mentioned I would do back at the beginning. We can do this. It's perfect then today. We can spend five or six minutes on each of these two things. The one first about the opaque pigments. Just to, re just to get the rest of you in, in sync with what was going on, we looked at some of these prints, which turned out to date from 1908. They're a reproduction house called Shinbi Shoin that made a set of woodblock prints based on Hiroshige designs. And nobody seems to be able to really find the original Hiroshige prints, and pretty much now, and I got a couple of emails about this, people are thinking this is the guy known as Hiroshige II. It's after the main Hiroshige had died and his workshop had been taken over by somebody else. And when we looked at this, I zoomed in close on a couple of these, and we could see clearly that they had been made with really quite opaque pigmentation. The black would have been printed first, and you can see some of the clear black here, and the black here where it's touched by a transparent blue. This is the normal black. And then we pointed out where at least two of these pigments, the yellow pigment is really quite opaque, and the green pigment also is quite opaque and you can see where the black is clear and then when the black comes under the green area it gets really uh, densely uh, covered up. Like that was the one that showed the, the yellow to the, to the worst effect and another one of these prints here we looked at it where the green, yes here, this one here, this was where the green was very much covering it up. You can see the black out in the open area here is black. And then as we move into the area where the green is, the black has been tinted and covered by the green. So opaque pigments, and Dave said, and I'll still stand by this actually, he said it wasn't so common in the Edo time to use opaque pigments like this. Once we move into Meiji and Taisho, all bets are off. And a couple of correspondents, one in particular, carefully listed this and this and this, and he mentioned that uh, a number, he has a number of Hiroshige prints himself, Hiroshige II, from the 1850s or 60s, which show heavy opaque pigmentation. Okay, so I went to our shelf here because we have, as it happens in the shop, we have a bunch of these right here, right now. These are Hiroshige II prints, different places and scenes of Japan's in the provinces from exactly that era. And I grabbed four of them at random to see what I could see. And to me, this is showing a um, cleaner ukiyo-e type stuff. Here's a very, very similar green. It's not 100% transparent. We do see the black outside and the black inside, but this is nowhere near as dense and as thick as what we just saw. Here's the yellow, and the yellow is not covering the black. So this is, to me, more of the traditional approach. The black is printed first, and for the most part, it does show through, even past the yellows and greens. And I just grabbed a bunch of them. Here's another yellow, mustard type yellow, and the black is clear and clean. The red is hoyoko, totally transparent, as is the yellow, and the green, I wouldn't call it totally transparent, but it's printed. And someone's saying they might have printed the black last, and there's absolutely no way that would have been done. Absolutely no way. The black is covered in bits by green. It, as I said, it's not 100%. Look, here you can see it here. Black at the bottom is rich black, 
and covered by this green. So this green also, same thing, 1860s. This is a tad opaque, but not as bad as what we saw in the Shimbi Shoman version. So anyway, long story short, both things are true. But for the most part, and I just want to stand by what I said, for the most part, back in the Edo period, the pigments were largely transparent. They were thin, vegetal colors of plant origin. And bit by bit by bit, it got worse. And come the 20th century, we have lots and lots and lots of opaque pigments. This one, maybe, you can see it, look. This is, this is a bit opaque. Clean black down here, something there. So I think we're both okay. I will still stand by what I said, but yes, there were opaque pigments used in the Edo time. Okay, show and tell. Today's show and tell. After all the diversions and fooling around and other, other things going on, today's show and tell. I don't need very much desk space for it. find it. Okay, this is not, this is not new. This is new. This is not new. This is a set of prints that I received a few years ago. It today. Cameraman, sound man, light man, do your jobs. Okay. We're looking at match label prints again today. And a few years ago, I received a set of prints that, well, to use the expression where we're playing with too much here, it blew my socks off. There's a bunch of prints. There was nine of them in the group. I've had these for a number of years. There was nine prints in the group. I've given the mods a link. If the mods get, they've done it, Coding Gummy is right on it. These are among the very first match label prints I ever got years ago. And they really showed me just vividly how incredibly accomplished the early, the pre-war carvers could be. I looked at these. And thought, come on, give me a break. Because we have two layers of hair. What they've done here is they've taken a normal Oban size Utamoto print about yay big and shrunk it down to match table size and they've still done hairs dot for dot, hair for hair, the same as the original. And they've put an extra block on top to give the black hair as well. Anyway, I had these, as I said, a number of years ago. I don't remember, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago when I was first starting to collect prints seriously. They're on the website there. I got nine of them, and there was no way prints like this were ever published in a group of nine. Eight it could be, we all know about hake. Ten it could be, twelve is much, much more common. So I put these online, and, and I put the message on that collection page that you can see there, number of prints from a broken set. And I might have even said perhaps ten, perhaps twelve, maybe one day we will get the missing ones to complete our collection. Well, you know where the story's going here. This week, earlier this week, on Yahoo Auction, came up some more of the same prints. There's a good part and a bad part to the story. The original set that I had had nine. How many are in the complete set? We still actually really don't know. But what we got for the auction here is we have got now 35 more of these things. The same nine that I have are represented here and a bunch more. 35 of these tiny little prints. And I'm like, just, just like, what is happening? So I saw the auction come up for 35 of these, and I'm thinking, okay, Dave, 
fire half the staff, save some salary money, <laughs> whatever, because I really, really, really want to get these. Let me get the auction page, send it off to you. Hang on a sec. I can't find it now. Just a minute. Oh, what have I done with it? Where's the auction page? Utamaro. Hey, just a minute. I can't find it. Here we are. The guy actually made a mistake. He put a picture on his auction page of seven by five on the, the uh, pictures. He took the picture of the whole thing and he said 42 Utamaro reproductions. It's not 42. Seven times five is 35 not 42. So actually he lied about what was in the auction. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But there's the auction. One other person bid on it and it passed away and I got these 35 prints for 1600 yen which at the moment is about $12. $12. And I am in tears. I'm sorry. I don't even know where to start to think about this. I did a YouTube video a few years ago featuring just one print. You remember, it was one of those couchiers. Just one print was enough for a YouTube video. So, you know, th this would be enough. I don't need to own more. I could own just this one. Look at the makeup, look at the eyes. One would be enough. And here there are now 35 of these things sitting here. I took them upstairs the other day and I shouldn't have because it destroyed the girls. Ishikawa-san was here, Ayumi-san was there. I took them up, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning when I got the package open. Took them upstairs and they didn't get any work done again. It's like two or three days in a row I've done that, brought them prints. So there are duplicates now. The original nine that I have are all represented in this set. How many are in the set? I don't know. What we're seeing is they, they are images taken from Utamaro Oban prints. And this is the next step in research to try and identify the original Utamaro prints that these were taken from. Because these are not original drawings. They must have taken a large scale print. I say Oban, it's, it's the print about here. This is another Oban print. This is the size we're talking about for the originals. And the people who did this set shrunk them down to small size. And you'll see some names here on each of these things. This is Yamamoto-san. These are members of the collector's group. And one of the names is different, and I randomly, it seems I randomly pulled this out. The name on this one is a man who would also have been in the collector's group, but this is the man who carved these. It says Hori Uemura. So sometime in the early Showa period, this is going to be 1920, somewhere around there. This is pre-war. Uemura-san carved this group. They're not all perfect. Look at this. We have a little bit of misregistration on the red there. And the way these would have been made, they wouldn't have been made one at a time. Chit, 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 carved, chit, chit, chit. You saw what I'm doing with our match label prints right now. I've carved five in a row. And we did earlier for our January, February, I did 10 up, five by two to make 10. These would have been made the same way. I don't have any idea what the layout would have been. If I knew how many prints were in the set, we could sort of work it out four by six or something like this. We don't know. But the fact that we've got mis misregistration on some of these on the red block would make me think that there was fairly a large number on the block. And the ones on the far side of the block away from the registration mark were really, really critical and difficult to register. I don't know. I may never ever find out. We don't know. This one too, the black here, is slightly misregistered, a little bit high. Can you see it? Where the black hair is coming up into the yellow of the comb. So are these absolutely perfect masterpieces? No. But are they to die for? Yes. 
there's something else. They have gone to the time and trouble making this block. They have gone to the time and trouble of doing showman zuri, glossy black, on the hair. This is at the point where my socks, well, my socks are just there in the next county. It doesn't matter. They've gone to this time and trouble. Did they need to do this? If it is a full set, if it's 35, then I'm really not sure about the layout. 35 doesn't come up well. 7 by 5, I don't know. It could have been done actually on an Oban sheet. It might have been 4 by 8. If I were forced to do it on one sheet, I think that's what I would do, 4 by 8. But I really, really, really don't know. The only way to know for sure is if we ever saw an uncut piece or a photograph of an uncut set. No, no, there's makeup, so you're not imagining this. There is a faint pink blush on all of these things. It's a gradation down from under the eyebrow. And this is the standard. This was a big deal, a standard deal on Utamato large prints. And we see the same thing here on these. They've gone for the kill. There's lipstick and there's makeup down from the eyes. You can see it here, look, for example, if I put this under, can you see the shadow on the nose? The nose is untouched, the makeup comes down in this zone, and it comes down in this zone. It's carved here, and it's a gradation down around her eye. Are we going to use this for this year's prints? No, for a couple of reasons. One is there would be a rebellion upstairs. If I tried to publish prints like this right now, upstairs would be rebellion. I've pushed them this year. I've pushed and pushed and pushed. They've done magnificent work, but I can't push them to a sense when there's to a point where there is so much stress, it's not fun anymore. So no, I can't push them yet. The other thing is this year's series, we do have Bijinga plant. These are prints of women. We do have Bijinga plant. That's the September group and they are already being carved by Chonsan. So we do have Bijinga prints coming, not these ones. You know, those auctions, you know, I just don't get it. Last night, I got blown out of the water. I bid on dozens of auctions last night. I paid more than I thought I would ever be able to pay for some stuff and still got blown away. So if you have this idea that Dave is scooping stuff like this every night here on auctions, no. I got blown out of the room last night. I brought some big guns to the table. There was some pigments. They were packages of... Uh, maybe post-war, 1950s, 1960s, packages of pigments that we can no longer buy for love or money. And I put six figures on the table in yen, and I still got blown out of the water. There was somebody there who wanted them more, willing to pay more than I was. You know, it's funny, it gets to a point when there's just so many you don't even see them anymore. You know, if you had just this one print, it would be one of the highlights of your life. And yet another one, another one, you just turn the page. There's a problem with having too many of these damn things. Yeah, the makeup would all have been on one block, of course, side by side by side, and you would have used a very small brush. You know, if you imagine these things as being side by side on the wood block, just the wood block, and he would have gone chit 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 print height again chit 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 chit. I don't think you could do thirty-five of them in one go, not with a gradation. I don't think so. They might all be carved on one block, but you wouldn't try and print 35 separate gradations on one in one run, in one go. So it would be dry, even for us too. 
if you think about it, the, the block is moist. How many gradations? Choo, choo, choo. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, ten, maybe, and then paper on and print it. Then do the next row. You could do something like that, I guess. I don't know. Without having more information, we just wouldn't know. So there you are. There you are. There you are. And we're not going to get them photographed right away. There is somebody, we've posted the link already. Nine of these are in extremely high resolution image. That's Aoi, Aoi Amazon coming. They're in extremely high resolution on our website already. So when we get to it, we will get to these in the course of time. For now, I just couldn't resist sharing it with you. I've shown too many match table prints recently. I'm sorry, but just, just whatever. There's Katazuri on these. Look at this. They've done Katazuri on her collar. And Shomenzuri, black rubbing on her hair. <laughs> incredible. Incredible, incredible. Okay. It's Monday. I'm gone now. I'll be here three days from now. I'll be back on Thursday morning. Let's put up the outside camera. I'll be here on Thursday morning. And I have now critical, critical jobs just beyond belief. I've got to get these prints finished. But also Kawasaki-san is waiting. The Matsushima. I have to do the Matsushima color blocks. That may be what we're going to do on Thursday. I don't know. We'll find it. Something to do. Okay, for me right now, I'll get my umbrella and I'm going to head out and get a cup of much needed coffee. Thanks very much guys. Sorry it's a bit of a scrappy screen today, but I think it's okay. We had lots of good content. And thank you again to Fabiola San for that fabulous book. I gotta sit down and write to her. What am I gonna do? I'll send an email. I'm gonna send an email. It's okay, she knows. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm out of here guys. Thanks very much. See you next time. <laughs>